Okay, welcome back to Rails Minute. Hi everyone, I'm Dan Bostrom, Rails Member Engagement Manager, and I'm here with uh, Deirdre Brennan, Rails Executive Director. Uh, this is our effort to bring you short videos uh, where you can find out more about what is happening with Rails. So Deirdre, thank you for joining me. Um, Halloween is coming up. Do you have a favorite costume? Well, not for myself, but I, you know, some costumes that I have seen on other people that I've enjoyed. And uh, um, I'm going to call out Mary Witt here because I love her costume, our own Mary Witt. She has a football costume. It's actually like she wears a football. I mean, for those of you who knew Ma know Mary, you know she's a big Bears fan. So it's really great. I it it definitely does not look like something you could you know buy at a store, but it's. You know, so and but other ones that I think are, I've seen um, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich yeah, that's for two people. I thought that was pretty good. And um, a toilet paper roll. I thought that was great. <laughs> Seems wow. very timely as well, right? So <laughs> we should have, I guess we should address that for today. If we didn't, um, that's okay. That's fine. Um, <laughs> okay. So oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the the big news for uh, for for Rails right now is that we have reduced our uh, uh, required quarantine for items in Rails delivery um, from seven days to three days. Uh, so this was a big decision. Can you talk a little bit more about how we reached this conclusion and what it will mean for libraries? Sure. Well, what it mainly means for libraries, obviously, is that that they won't be having to store their materials for as long, so that they. They won't be taking up as much space and patrons will be getting their materials faster. Um, you know, this is just so difficult because um, there's so many divergent opinions. There really aren't any known facts about the, about the transmission of the virus, you know, to infect people from materials. There's lots of research being done, as we know, the Realm study and the, the work that Battelle is doing. Where they're, they're, you know, the research is showing that yes, the virus lives, infectious virus lives on uh, different types of materials for different, you know, amount of time. What it doesn't show is if, is if that is an inf infectable rate that's that lives on the, on the materials for, you know, even after a day, after three days, after six days, whatever. So. There, there aren't any actual, you know, reported cases of anybody getting it this way. I mean, there aren't, it's not, it's hard to prove a negative. You, there could be, but we no, nobody knows of any. So, you know, we were getting um, a lot of, uh, I'd say, pushback from our members about the length, which that's fine. That's, that's, you know, we want that. We want to know because they're out there doing research and, you know, dealing with the situation. You know, then a couple of states came out, uh, state libraries uh, came out saying 24 hours is enough. Um, and, you know, we, I know that I, one of our Midwest neighbors has said something similar. I don't remember which one. Um, anyway, so we just finally decided that the, you know, preponderance of the evidence just didn't indicate that things needed to be uh, quarantined that long. We debated going to one day, but that seemed uh, unnecessarily quick and kind of radical at this point, given what isn't known. So, um, you know, it was, we had a conversation at the board meeting last week about it all because I was particularly wanting the board and, you know, anybody who was um, attending or watching the, or listening to the meeting to understand that this is not easy decision. This is not, it was something, you know, where we were going to and are now like not doing the same thing as, as Heartland or Carly, or I don't actually know what Chicago is currently doing. Um, and that, that, you know, that's important. We try, we always want to be a team player. We always, you know, want to make, I mean, us doing something different made it harder for the, you know, those systems. So, but I, I think we, you know, we did the right thing. Um, you know, there's never not going to be any risk, no risk, I mean. I mean, you know, the even before COVID, it, um, 
there, there were germs on our materials when they went home or when they came back. So that, but I, it, so you have to decide what's an acceptable risk and what, and what makes the most sense when you put the whole thing into context. And so that's why we went to three days. Yeah, and you know, if we could, you and I can talk about it for for probably uh, this mm -hmm. this could this could be Rails hour instead of Rails minute. But mm -hmm. um, for anybody that wants more background and information, yeah. there's a lot of uh, materials on our COVID nineteen page, which we will link to, um, including the memo uh, uh, that we released uh, that has a lot more information about um, right. you know why we released this. So uh, yeah, thank you, DJ. I appreciate sure. that. Sure, thank you. I know it's on everybody's mind, so. Um, oh, of okay. course, yeah. What What else can you tell us about uh, what's happening around Rails? Uh, what would you like people to know about? Well, we're making progress on our equity, diversity, and inclusion initiative. We did have 40, about almost 40 people from all different types of libraries, all different staff levels, sizes of libraries, geographically uh, apply to be on the committee. So. If you're if you asked to be on the committee, if you expressed interest, please just bear with us a little bit longer. Think, everything takes longer. I I do things you know during COVID, um, during the pandemic, but we will be forming the committee soon. And we're really pleased by the interest. Um, so that's uh, you know that's a big deal. Um, I I just wanted to note that we did get a um, compliment on the Rails a minute. For, um, that we received from, I believe it was Missouri, that they liked our commercials. So I thought that was great. So, <laughs> so there nice you go, to, you know? Yeah, yeah nice, nice that people are watching. Yeah, That's right, good. exactly. Yep. Um, okay, so if you do have a comment or a question, um, please, please note that you can always submit them to us. Um, you can send them to communications at railslibraries.info. Um, finally, last week was the 2020 ILA Annual Conference, and Deirdre, I know that you gave a presentation on serving the unserved. Uh, would you mind just telling us a little bit about that uh, presentation? Sure. I, I first want to congratulate ILA on a great virtual conference. I'm sure that there was a, was a ton of work going into understanding how to make that all work, and I think it worked out great. Um, so yes, my presentation, I did it with Catherine Yanikoski, who is the, de the deputy director at Juliet Public Library. And so um, we talked about a few different aspects and I imagine that you can find the slides on the ILA website. Um, and, uh, you know, Catherine, uh, first of all, did a great job of explaining the importance of libraries, access to public libraries to, um, for literacy, for early literacy purposes. And obviously with school libraries under the gun right now, um, it's even more important that you know kids have access to, to public libraries when they're young. Um, we talked about that. We talked about some things that Joliet has done in terms of um, they've taken the, the Cards for Kids Act and applied it a lot more broadly, which is every library board's you know, right to do. Um, so it's not just a reduced lunch. It's, you know, it's all the, I think it's all the kids in their school district. Um, and, um, you know, just talked about some changes that are coming in the administrative rules. Greg McCormick was there too. And just, you know, kind of generally tried to push the case that this is, there, it, there is a social good to having a public library that outweighs the cost to individual taxpayers. That is my firm belief. I know that it is many librarians belief. I know that it is not every librarian's belief and everybody has to work in their community, you know, to, to with their, the, the points of view of their patrons. But I, I do believe that, that um, you know, we can't let the public forget that the library is a public good and that many things that are supported by all and shared, um, you know, produce greater benefits. You know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, I guess. So um, I know that that's not a practical reason to do it, but it's still a really good reason to support universal service. It's not just about money. It's about right. education and literacy and 
the social fabric and community. It's about all those things. So, um, yeah. So, you know, I think I think it went well, and uh, we're just moving. You know, Catherine is on our Universal Service Committee. Sue Busenbark from Kiwani is the chair, and you know, we're just keeping moving forward. Yeah, they're, they're certainly doing some interesting stuff, and I'm, I'm really pleased to bring that to a wider audience and yep. have people see what Joliet is doing. Yes, um, they're doing amazing stuff there yep. in a lot of ways. Yep. yep. Okay, well, that will do it for us uh, on Rails Minute. Uh, uh, Deirdre, thank you for joining me, um, and we will see you in two weeks. Great. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Bye.